All right, welcome back. This is Zim Dog, and we are going to finally get back to the Bream. And at least on this rod, we are trying out the new. Oh wait, that's not right. Semolina millet porridge. That's not right. Hold on. That's the one we want, pearl barley. All right. So on some of the rods, I guess we're going to be trying out the new um, fake bream mix. And we're going um, 2022 and 24 again, I believe. On the clip. Well, let's see if these guys are still active. We're almost out of this stuff, so let's just use that pile up. Try to keep our inventory as clean as possible when we can. Okay. So we'll see. So we basically here it's about 2 a.m. in the game time. We're just now getting getting our rods in, so we'll see how we do. If it seems active, we'll uh, we'll do it some more in the coming episodes. <clears throat> Can be a really good place, a really good way to make silver if the bream are, are pretty active. <coughs> so someone had a really thoughtful. Uh, comment on one of our recent videos. Just gonna pull that up here in just a second and reread it so that I can try to be as thoughtful in my response. And that middle rod is the one that actually does have what I think will be the best of the ground bait. Okay, so Dave says, um, he was saying he, saying he likes the longer videos. It gives him more time to see which spots are working. Has a few questions about farming different fish times other than bream and a couple of others that I do. Like to know how many eels we can farm in one session. If you start at the right time. So first of all, let me stop there. On eel, because they are more random fish, I don't think you can, it's difficult to answer a question about how many you can farm of something that's a more rare fish to bite because it will vary greatly from session to session. You can have a really lucky session or the eel can be really biting well and you may catch multiples. You can go whole nights without any uh, and on average you might just see one per night kind of thing. Now as the more experience you fish with them, you'll get learn little tricks of spots and uh, hook sizes and all that kind of stuff and you might be able to maximize the amount that you're catching on average but especially with more rare fish it's hard to make any kind of in, uh, in, intelligent prediction on how many you'll get and um, he also says it would be awesome if we could fish to make 
400, 600 silver in a night or in a day. Is there any way you can see if you can figure out other fish types we can farm for silver at 16 and above? Not sure if it's possible to make more than, let's say, two to 300 silver a day at this level or not. And he kind of went on from there, but those are some really thoughtful questions. So what you're describing is, is basically a lot of what, uh, what the community uh, really attempts to do is, first of all, finding the hot spots where fish are really active and the baits that they're really active on. But then once you have done that, then taking it to the next level where you refine it and dial it in so that you're making the maximum profits you can and catching just as many as you can. Um, so we see a lot of that and, and some of that is very successful. I'll give you an example and this isn't a low level example. I'm going to kind of burn through one, one stack of these at a time, especially since this bream session doesn't have much longer uh, i'll give you an example of this though um there has been a hot streak on asp and caspian trout at ladoga lake sorry at octuba octuba lake and you know this is a little higher level stuff but it's just an example and the community has been for a week or two now at least a lot of folks have been farming that spot and making several hundred silver a day on trolling those spots in Octuba. But in the last couple days, people have refined it. They found exactly where the hottest spots are and the best ways to set up their rigs, how long their leader should be, what lures they should be using. So they've really refined it. And now some folks... I think Kluby actually had a video about this recently. I haven't, I haven't farmed that. I haven't farmed this spot that we're talking about in a, in a while. So I'm, I haven't actually been a part of this, but I think Kluby has a video where, you know, he, he was showing sort of his, the way he was approaching that. And the amount of silver that people are making in that spot has increased dramatically. The more that they have discovered about how to best approach it. So that's just an example. I mean, I think that is in, in, what you're asking, Dave. That is what we are trying to do, what the, much of the community does, and that information is often shared, sometimes on the forums, but more often than not these days on the official Russian Fishing Forward Discord. If you don't have access to the Russian Fishing Forward Discord, um, I believe there are... There may be links to that on the forum. I haven't looked in a while. The other thing you could do is pretty much go into anybody's stream who's actively streaming Russian Fishing for, And you could ask if anyone has a link to share to get into that Discord. I, I just don't, I don't have it off the top of my head here on the best way to get that. But usually in someone's, when someone is streaming RF4 and if there's at least like 15 or 20 people in there, you're probably going to be able to find somebody. There's a nice little eyed. Somebody in that stream that can just share that, uh, that link with you. But the RF4 Discord channel right now is probably the most active spot for the community sharing hotspots as they do pop up. And the way that those spots are then being refined. Are there examples of that at our level? So this account that I'm on is 15. Dave, you're talking about level 16. Sometimes there are, um, sometimes there are places. First of all, at 16, you can go to Cory. And this isn't always the case, but it is sometimes the case that you can make a tremendous amount of silver by trolling at Cory. So getting two spinning rods, sometimes some people even do three, but, and getting in a boat and trolling around with the right lures on and the right setups. And you can make a lot of silver that way. You can also overnight at quarry fish for burbot and during the day fish for char. Now, this isn't the most active fishing, but if you can find those spots, and a lot of times it's fishing off of that finger rock, the key right there near the boat dock, uh, 
you can make some really good silver between char and burbot. The other thing I would say that sort of pushes up the amount of silver you can make in one day is if you're able to combine a hot fishing spot with cafe orders. That's where you really see your total silver amount pop up dramatically at times. So I think the short answer is yes, there are spots like that even at lower level lakes but they're not always available you know we don't always know about them at least and when they happen people tend to fish the mess out of them until they dry up it is fascinating to see though i mean even that spot at at mosquito that we've been fishing a lot in this series has changed dramatically over the past couple of weeks. It's still a really great spot, but the things that you're catching and when you're catching them and how you're catching them, even with hook sizes and all that kind of thing, have seen, seems to have changed some. So it's just really interesting. All right, as I've been rambling on here, let's see how we're doing. One, two, three, four over a kilo plus that eyed. Not too shabby. As the big boys are biting, we'll keep putting pearl barley back in there. Um, this does sort of cut into the tinch time. But if bream are biting, bream are often more consistent. And as much as I love fishing for bream, we uh, have not fished this spot nearly enough. especially with all of the ground bait and pearl barley we have in our inventory right now. I need to be careful with this. What we're leaving the, um, the break on. Okay, I think I just uh, made it where those 
Steam notification when someone's sending me a message doesn't play the sound, at least on my gaming PC here. So we are still occasionally getting points, which is neat. It's still early enough that we could hit a nice bream or two still. Where, what are, where are we at here? This spot still seems to be really good. We've got six over a kilo and a nice fatty white bream and an eyed. And those two are kind of cool as well to see here. But that'll be decent silver, decent XP. And we'll see if there's also a cafe order for them. Seems like by eight or so, this spot gets pretty... Uh, not slow in terms of bite rate necessarily, but the, the bream will start getting a lot smaller. We'll see if that happens here. I guess the other part of the... question that Dave was asking that I didn't fully answer or didn't really answer was kind of times the most ideal times to go after different fish and there are some fish like bream and burbot eel for example that are vastly superior typically overnight you know but for the majority of the fish in the game it seems like early in the morning and, and then evening are going to be your best bets, just sort of like you would expect in real life fishing as well. When you find a spot that actually works 24 hours straight and you're catching markers and decent fish, those spots can also be really lucrative because there's not the big drop off in how much silver you're making. Speaking of drop-off, I feel like we're getting significantly less bites on this first rod. I think this might be only the second fish we've caught on this one. Now, this is also the one we have the largest leader on. So that could explain it, or it might just be random. It could just be random. The bite rate actually is picking up now, but some of these are going to be really small ones probably. And I, I just don't recommend standing in a bream spot and fishing it all day unless you continue to get markers at a really high rate. Catching all those little bitty bream isn't going to do anything for you. There's probably a better place to fish once that starts happening. Now, because we did just get another really nice one, over two kilos, in fact, I'm going to cast both of these back out one more time. And we'll see what the next couple fish look like. Still a marker. Let's see what the next fish looks like. Whoa. OK. 
Okay. Another nice one. Ten over a kilo. This spot seems great. Very little, very little wear to our uh, Sputnik Element Pro thus far. Now we've had these Lacerdes a lot longer. Grease is up to 1.1. Not too much. And then what about the... What about the uh, old school Lacerdi? A little more, a little more mech wear. And that may just have to do with the quality. I mean, I'm not sure that we've caught that many more fish on that reel. Maybe we have, but it might be with the quality difference between the two. So we're up to 44.8, about to hit 45%. All right, let's see what this is. Uh, it's not bad. It's maybe barely a marker. No, it wasn't a marker. All right, so. I like this Lacerdi S. Big picture, seems like it was worth the little bit of extra silver it cost. So we really cut into our uh, tinch time here. I didn't change the um, clip, but let's just get them in. You don't always need to clip. Back in my day, we had to do percentages, not clips. Hmm. Yeah. About to hit a trophy tinch, right? No orders for us. So let's see how we did. Um, what was that? About 20 minutes of fishing, 61 silver. That's great. A 
That's going to put us back over 500, and we are right now probably actively saving for our next rod and our next reel. That's not a tinch. Crazy Bream and their cheese and their cheese preference all of a sudden. What has gotten into them? Even though it might not be super lucrative, I'm still thinking about, let's see. We could do this and then come back up and fish for bream a little more. Still thinking about like trying some semolina, sweet dough, and maybe like cheese down at the, down at the boot there. Yeah, this spot, it's just like I missed the, I missed the tinch time staying so late for bream, but that's okay. I think it's probably worth it. And you could still catch the afternoon tinch time leading into the bream again. Where did Carlos Silva just catch a common barbel? Oh, fishing at bear. I don't think I've seen Carlos Silva fish, fish bear yet. One of them's getting a bite. There's a tinch at one o'clock in the afternoon. I do think it'd be good to, I, we need to burn through some of this ground bait, I guess, but to make some ground bait with cheese in it for these tinch. Now actual tinch ground bait does not have cheese in it. It's just got breadcrumbs, corn flour, and uh, hemp seed oil. But we can't make anywhere near that yet, so we're kind of making our own. I think that might have a fish on it. Or about to. And the fake tinch 
that we've been making has corn and maggots. So we could just add cheese to that or put it in place of maggots maybe. Let's just pop this thing right out of the water. You're not swimming away from me. I like it. And actually, if I understand correctly, Casting King is Dave from the, uh, oh yeah, it's a nice eel. So that was worth like 30 silver, I think Dave said. Um, Casting King is Dave from the YouTube uh, message we were reading earlier. That is a, uh, that is likely going to be a grass carp or something, right? If it's still even nibbling at all. It's so much cooler here than it usually is at, um, Oh, it's a really cool day. Dang. So that might be partially why the bream went a little later. I don't know. Might be why the tench are a little more active even this time of the afternoon. Still waiting on that trophy tench for 117 silver. So next rod is what around 
six to seven hundred silver. It'll be more here. I think we go ahead and get the rod first because, to be honest with you, I'm not putting a seven and a half kilo Adriatica on any of our current rods, other than the one that's got the um, Sputnik on it, and I don't want to. I, I wouldn't do that anyway. So. So we're basically buying the rod first, which is going to be the Fortuna feeder. Oh, it's not as much as I thought it was. I had that wrong in my mind. So we're getting close to being able to afford it. In fact, we may be able to afford it other stores. If, if Old Berg is still more expensive on the gear, we might be able to do it. So the tench are still biting here right now. We're just getting some smaller ones. Let's see if Artrex responded. Not yet. So Artrex, who's a buddy I've been playing games with for a long, long time. I don't know if I've talked about this recently on videos, but Artrex and I actually started playing games together. I want to say it was 2006. And around that time, we made a podcast together. It was actually the two of us and a third guy. And we did a weekly weekly show for a while, and that sort of morphed into a weekly WoW show that we did for a while. And uh, if you look back in the archives of my YouTube channel, you'll see some episodes where we do some games together, where we're trying out new games, early access games. We did some episodic content where we leveled some WoW characters together for a while, but Anyway, he's not as active these days on, he used to stream some and we used to try to do stuff together like officially. <clears throat> he doesn't do that as much anymore, but we still play games together. In fact, he's even done fishing with me a little bit. Lately, we were playing some Escape from Tarkov together. He's actually gotten back into Warframe, which I've played a little bit off and on over the years. Not very much, not enough to even understand much of the systems that are going on in that game but um he's sort of trying to get back into that and wanted me to play that with him some so may do that the thing i'm enjoying the most other than fishing of course is um escape from tarkov i just i'm so fascinated by that game uh although i get really focused on the tasks trying to do the tasks and figuring out the map and everything i'm not nearly focused enough on trying to see and, and take on other players. So I'm not very good, but I enjoy it. And I enjoy the inventory management, playing Tetris between matches and again, trying to figure out how to do the different tasks and whatnot. I hope that game continues to get developed and I hope that it Next year, possibly soon after, we'll come out on Steam and a whole new audience will get to experience all of that. The sort of loop that they have in that game, I think, is, is a very fun one. All we're doing is catching tiny ones. Is that because I'm using a 10? Should I go back to six? I don't know. I think in the past people have caught trophy tension on 10 hooks. Um, we could go a little bigger hook and probably still be fine on bite rate, but we are also more likely to 
hook into a uh, larger, more annoying grass carp, which might be what we've got on that third line right now. I really hope I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. It's a tinch, isn't it? It's a nice one, too. Well, let's see. Um, I was going to do a little comparison here. Has the orders changed? Okay, so a 2.1 kilo bream is equivalent to a 1.3 kilo tench. The problem is that the volume of bream is so much higher. 79 silver. Quit it. I feel like we could almost see that fish. If this was only Cory, we'd be able to see it.
Is that on there? There we go. Okay, calm down. It's okay. Well then. That was sort of disappointing, wasn't it? Before we wrap this one up, I think I will try to catch an eel instead of going back to bream. We'll do bream next time again, probably. I'll try to start it earlier next time so that we can get a full night of bream. This might be a nice tench. Yes, it could be a grass carp, but it also could be a nice tench, right? Right? Did he just get past the bridge? Maybe not.
This is the problem with tinch spots and it's not bad right now, but sometimes it gets really bad where grass carp will infest them as well. And you're using cheese to try to catch the tinch and you just keep hooking into grass carp. Tench would have started to get tired by now. This is a grass carp. I just hope we don't lose whatever's on that rod, but I don't think it's worth putting this one down. He's coming in, I think. Maybe five or six kilo grass carps, what I'm guessing. I'm getting good at this. 2,500 experience. A lot of experience, very little silver. We're gonna try without any ground bait this time on this rig. And we probably won't sit here the whole night, but we'll give it a couple hours in game at least and see if we can get lucky again. Line one is doing something. There you go. Easiest 1300 XP you'll ever get. That was no ground bait, by the way. I think we need to break down and sometime fairly soon purchase some nicer sinkers.
Maximum total weight of fish caught for one day. We're going to end up having to make a lot of semolina. Now we could make go back and make a bunch of wheat as well. But that's a lot of semolina to get up to 35%. Fishing for eel just seems like such a roll of the dice. And this is what we probably need. Pieces of fish. Cheese. Maybe we should keep cheese on there for one of one of the rods when we're fishing for eel. bigger hook for this but let's see look how far down that angle is I'm guessing that is in the 6.5 meter hole
Really hoping we could see a burbot here from the other spot, but burbot aren't the most active either, so to only have one line in the water for burbot is maybe not the best strategy either. Bream again, just because. Uh-oh. Now, it could be a bream. Definitely don't want to pick it up too early in case it is a burbot. Ideally, I would say you probably want to use like at least size four, if not like large two or ones for burbot fishing. It may be on there now. Burbot, kind of like catfish, aren't likely to spool you. Once they get on there, they kind of just hang out. Sometimes, so it's hard to know. We're about to have to stop anyway, so... Let's just find out. Well, shoot. Just got the one eel again, just one eel. And I don't know if it was just coincidence or not, but it was the one without the ground bait on there. Look at all these rough orders. Okay. Hundred silver. 
We'll take it. I'm not going to refuse your 100 silver. If we had fished for bream the second night, though, probably would have been significantly more than that. As always, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time.